Hey there guys, Virtus here and welcome to my video where we are going to be sharing you and introducing you to landscapes inside of Unreal Engine 4. Now Unreal Engine 4 is capable of making really beautiful landscapes and that's everything ranging from small detailed landscapes to vast open world landscapes as well. And when you set up a landscape, it's really important to set it up in the right way with optimization in mind. Now, if you take a look at the clips running in the background, it's going to show you just what Unreal Engine 4 is capable of. And while this is running, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the two ways that you can make a landscape. And then we're going to move on to Unreal Engine 4 and getting started with that. So the first one is by creating a landscape inside of a free modeling package like Maya. However, if you was to do that, if you have a large landscape, you'd have to break it down into loads of sections manually and then make the low polygon versions of each one of those terrains manually and it just takes a whole bunch of time. Now with Unreal Engine 4's landscape editor, what this allows us to do is to essentially just go ahead and start sculpting, start, you know, start painting and literally after that, the engine is going to do the rest for you and that's part of the reason why I like Unreal Engine 4 so much. So having said that, we're going to get you started in Unreal Engine 4 creating your first terrain or rather looking at the settings to create your first terrain as they are really important. Anyway, without further ado, let's dive into the engine. So to start off with landscape, you need to go and go over to the landscape mode and you can do this by clicking the little landscape icon at the top in the modes panel. And you can also access this by holding down shift and free at the same time. <clears throat> Anyway, so once you're in here, by default it's going to take you into the management panel and this is going to allow you to manage your terrain or create a new one. Now we haven't got a terrain in our scene at the moment, so it's going to automatically take us to new landscape and then from here we can define a bunch of settings for this landscape which are going to define essentially how it's set up, how it should be optimized and how the engine should build it. Now if you take a look in our viewport if you just zoom out a little bit you can see a little green grid and this is representing what your terrain is going to look like when you go and create this. Now don't worry if it's too big or too small right now this is something that we're going to be changing using all of these settings and we're not actually going to be creating the terrain in this episode more so we are going to be focusing on understanding what all of these settings do so that when you do set up your terrain that it's set up in the most efficient and optimized way possible because a massive misconception when it comes to making terrains is people just make it as big as they can and then once they start putting foliage and other stuff on there it just takes up too much processing power and you just cannot use the level. So having said that, let's go through some of these settings. So starting off from the very top, we have got our management mode, our sculpting mode and our painting mode. Now these are pretty straightforward, so management is just editing and defining the settings via landscape. Sculpt and paint are currently greyed out and the reason why is because we haven't actually got a terrain yet until we hit create. Sculpting will allow you to sculpt and shape your terrain and painting is going to allow you to paint different materials and textures onto your terrain to put down things like grass, rock, sand, that kind of stuff. But anyway, moving on, the next thing is we've got two options. We've got Create New, which is going to create you a flat terrain based on the settings that we put down here. Or we've also got Import from File. And this is going to allow us to use a height map, which is pretty much just a texture which is going to predetermine the height of your terrain. Now, I already have a couple of videos on this, such as importing real world locations, grabbing the height map and bringing it into Unreal Engine 4. The link for that is in the description. I definitely advise you to go and check that out. But anyway, I'm not going to worry about height maps just now. That will be a whole nother video of its own. So moving on down from there, you've got your material. Your material is going to contain a bunch of different textures which you're going to be painting onto your landscape. So this material will contain the texture for rock, 
sand, mud, and whatever else you want to put on there. And then your painting mode is just going to change through the different textures in your material and just paint it on wherever you want it to, you know, wherever you want it to go into. So that's pretty straightforward. We're not going to put a material in there just yet. Um, as we haven't really looked at materials just yet, but we can add that in later on and it is something that we're going to be touching up on briefly as part of this series. So the next thing is our location, rotation and scale. These are pretty straightforward. Location is just your location and the level and as I use the transformation tools to move this side to side, up and down and stuff, you can see it's being reflected here. Now, generally, I try not to change these. I try to leave these on zero, zero, and zero. So our landscape is in the center of the level. The rotation, generally, you won't want to rotate that. But most importantly, do not change the scale as it can really hurt the quality of your, <coughs> as it can really hurt the quality of your landscape. Or it can also just make it you know, there's lots of things. It can either hurt the quality or it can hurt the performance. Just leave it where it is and then instead just use the sections, the components and the resolution to control the quality instead. Now, moving on, having said that, the section, the components, the number of components and the resolution is where it's sort of where it gets a little bit more complicated. So just bear with me a moment. I'm going to try and explain it as slowly as I can. So first things first, the one you've got here is your section size. Now a section is pretty much one of these big little squares here and you can see they've got little mini squares inside of that. Now if I change this down to something like seven by seven and if I zoom in here, you can see each one of these sections has now got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And we have small sections. Now. One thing I do want to mention with this is if you have smaller sections, it's going to allow the engine to have uh, more control with the LODs. And this is essentially going to be raising or lowering the complexity of that section. Now, if you want a large world, I would instead use larger sections as it's going to be less of a hit on the performance that way. If you have a small world, using smaller sections like 7x7 seven seven is not going to be a problem, but if you reduce this, you're going to have a little bit more detail, which is quite nice. Now for the purpose of this video, I'm just going to put it to something which is relatively average, which is 63x63. 63 63. <clears throat> now moving on, we have got sections per component. And this is also quality related. So a component is basically a section of, well not a section, but a part, a larger part of your landscape. And this larger part can have either one section, which is one of these big squares, or it can have two by two. So if I show you a component now, you can see you've got these big lines here and then you've got the four sections in between it. Now, generally for mobile and smaller worlds and something you want to be simple, I would just use one by one. But if you want to have a bit more detail, um, you might want to work with four by four. It's entirely up to you. Personally, I just keep it simple one by one and that is it. <clears throat> so moving on, the next one is your number of components. This is relatively straightforward. This is pretty much just defining the size of your landscape. So right now, eight by eight goes up to here. If I set this to 12 by 12, you can see it gets bigger. 15 by 15, it's getting bigger and so on and so forth. And this isn't changing the size of the sections, just the number of these components rather. And that's how you change the scale. And like I said earlier, try not to touch the scale settings over here as it can hurt the performance or the quality of your terrain. And then lastly below that is your overall resolution. Now your overall resolution is essentially just the quality of your landscape. And when I say quality, I mean by the vertices. Now, if you have more of these, it's gonna be a higher hit on the performance. If you have lower, less of them, it's gonna be a little bit better for your computer. So if you have a large open world, what I would say is don't have your resolution too high. 
I usually like to leave it on the default settings and that's all good for me, um, but it is one thing you might want to play around with when creating larger landscapes. Anyway, moving on from this, it's now time to create that landscape and doing it is really simple from here. You've got two buttons, you've got create and you've got fill world. Fill world is going to pretty much fill your entire level using these settings, apart from like the number of components and stuff, and then create is going to create it using these exact settings. So if we press create, give it a couple of seconds to import this landscape, the little green grid is going to disappear, and then it's going to unlock the sculpt and the paint management sections, and from there we'll also have a big grey checkerboarded landscape. Now you can see this is just loaded in and it's taking me straight to the sculpting mode, uh, sculpting mode. And this is our landscape. And if I wanted to, I could then start painting on my mountains and stuff, but that is for another video. Now this checkerboarding effect is just the default material inside of Unreal Engine 4 because we haven't applied like a rock, a grass, a mud or anything like that. And also these lines, these sort of grids that are going up it, are nothing to worry about either. Once we build our lighting, that will go away. But for now, this is what the base or the foundation for your landscape should start to look like. Anyway guys, I'm going to end off the video here. If you're more interested in going on to building your landscape a little bit more, make sure you do head off to the next video. But anyway, once again, thanks for watching, stay awesome, keep creating, your boy Virtus. Signing out. This video was made possible by my supporters on Patreon. If you want more videos like this, check out my Patreon page using the link in the description. To stay up to date on new releases, make sure you follow us on social media.